Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're going to be laying cable. I got three different issues of cable here by three different artists, so I thought it'd be fun to just look at the art and compare and contrast. And so that's what we're looking at today. So I'm going to cue the intro while you guys subscribe to my channel, please. And thank you very much. Hit that like button and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so here we go. Um, so I want to say this is Cable's first series here. Um, and then he had a mini series, one and two issues, and then he got his own series. And so let's look at the mini series illustrated by John Romita Jr. And the cover is illustrated by John Romita Jr. and Dan Green. Um, full disclosure, not the biggest Cable fan. I did love X Force, uh, I loved Rob Liefeld's art. I thought it was a lot of fun. I was totally into all that stuff at the time. Um, Cable always seemed like some weird old man to me. I don't know. It just never completely kicked with me, clicked with me. Like, I could care less about Scott Summers' future son and all that business. But anyway, Cable is undeniably, like, one of the biggest uh, properties in Marvel and one of the most popular characters. And obviously, he's been around for, gosh... 30 years now. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, so John Romita Jr. I love his art. I, not, I didn't always love his art. When he first took over the X-Men after Paul Smith, I wanted to have a stroke. I hated it. I thought it was terrible. His characters looked blocky and gross to me. Then, of course, I eventually loved it, and now I look back on it with great reverence. Um, I did grow to like it during the course of the X-Men, and then when he left to do other projects, I really like his run on Daredevil with Anne Nascenti and his run on uh, The Man Without Fear, Daredevil with Frank Miller, and Thor was really terrific. I think, um, for me, it depends on who he's being inked by. Um, at the time, I didn't think Dan Green was the greatest inker for him, but now looking back, I really love Dan Green's inks, um, especially on JRJR. But I really love Klaus Janssen and Al Williamson for um, John Jr. So let's check it out. I mean, uh, you know, nobody really draws Cable better than Rob Liefeld, obviously. I mean, maybe not so obviously, but he did create him after all. So this is... Um, written by Fabian Nis Nicieza. Uh, penciled by John Romita Jr., inked by Dan Green. Letters by Bill Oakley and colors by Bran Brad Venkata. Um, so, I mean, John Romita Jr., wow, this is a great double plate page spread. This is kind of reminding me of uh, The New Gods or The Forever People Jack by Jack Kirby. I mean, you could definitely see a little bit of Kirby and... John Jr.'s art as far as um, being like powerful and big figures and just kind of exploding off the page. And he's really just like one of the best storytellers ever. Like he just makes it seem so effortless. I think he may have written like one or two things in the past, but I just think he would be an excellent writer, perhaps uh, based on his just great ability to tell a comic book story great panels here i mean i feel like uh he was leaning into the 90s uh sort of image look at the time you know with the big figures on the page and the splash pages and the money shots weapon x i mean um john romita jr definitely is a different type of artist uh than like an image more polished more pretty i mean i definitely would not call his art pretty um Although it can be. I mean, like I said, like his major strength is his storytelling. He can do quiet moments. He can do action packed. He can do space. He can pretty much do it all. And I think that's what really counts as a comic book artist. You need to, you never know where you're going to take, where the adventure is going to take you. And um, 
you pretty much have to be prepared for anything. Um, you know, whether that's drawing a Western scenario or a space scenario or vampires. I mean, comic books is pretty much all over the place. Looking back at this though, I, this is, I'm not thinking this is like my favorite. I'm, I'm wondering if it's the coloring that is throwing me off here. It sort of loses something. Domino looks pretty cool there. Um, Don, Dan Green was mainly um, John Jr. This is, it's so funny because this is, I always say this uh, when doing a, an image book um, from the 90s. I say, this is the inevitable point in the review where I have to turn the book sideways. And it's not an image book, but it might as well be sort of since it's a cable book, if that makes sense. I don't know. Is that harsh? I don't think so. Anyway, I don't know. A lot of this stuff is lost on me. I don't, like I said, Cable was never my favorite, although I cl apparently I collected all his books. Really leaning into the sideways stuff here. But this is fun. I mean, how much action and power. That's such a John Romita Jr. thing right there. Pow, and I love this big fist coming off the page. And I keep mentioning this, but I was horrified by, especially like a veteran professional. And I have to come across like who the hell said it, but someone was saying that they need to get rid of sound effects in uh, comic books. And I say the nay, hell no. Like sound effects totally make the comic. I mean, it's so much fun, especially if they come up with like the most ridiculous, like onomatopoeia, like skok and fash and cracked but you can almost like just hear it when you're reading it. And that's the magic of comics. And I guess novels prior to that is like creating, you know, sort of the ambiance and um, um, feeling with your own imagination as it were. So that was John Romita Jr.'s take on Cable. And we got a couple more. So this is the first issue of Cable's, uh, you know, solo series. I'm sure he's had a million since then. So. To put it into context, this is from 1993, Cable's Hub World Beginnings. And this is by R.T. Bear. Um, speaking of underrated artists, I really love, uh, I don't know that we were speaking of underrated artists, but I really love R.T. Bear. I really liked his inks um, on Jim Lee. Of course, Scott Williams is the preeminent inker for, um, you know, Jim Lee, but I did appreciate R.T. Bear's inks. And he's mostly an inker, but he's a great artist in his own right. He has his own book, uh, Black and White, if you remember that from the 90s, like the second wave of image. But I just thought he's pretty solid, very, very much like uh, Jim Lee. He did a couple of issues of X-Men, um, like in the middle of Jim Lee's run, like the adjectiveless X-Men before he jumped ship to do Wildcats. And um, and I just thought they were terrific, and I love his art. So this is going to be fun to look at. Cable, Rocks, and Waves. I mean, very, very, like, compatible and comparable with Jim Lee, right? So uh, written by Fabian Nicieza, who had absolutely nothing to do with Cable's background, origin, or creation. It was all Rob Liefeld. And um, just kidding, in case you didn't detect the sarcasm, by the way. Uh, so penciled by Art T. Bear. Special thanks to Danny, Mickey, Dan Pinosian, Trevor Scott, and Al Milgram, all helping on inks. So I don't know if Art inked some of it himself, which I'm thinking he probably did as he is primarily an inker. But he really brings a lot of power and fun page layouts. I really enjoy this. His art has a really pretty aesthetic to me that, like I said, is pretty much, I mean, come on, that's very Jim Lee right there. Don't y'all think? This is such a early 90s comic, and I love it for that. Very cool. It's funny how, like, I mean, and that's an Art Adams, like, uh, Ed Piscor of cartoonist kayfabe fame calls this the screen door, and I think I, that is genius. I love it. That's exactly what it looks like, and that's, like, the analogy I've been waiting for all my life. So thank you, Ed Piscor. Go read Red Room and check out Cartoonist Kayfabe channel because they're basically like the uh, elevated version of my channel. Someone described my uh, channel like a chaser to Kayfabe and I'll take it. 
I will definitely ride those coattails. So thank you very much, Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor. I don't know, Cable, right? Strife. Oh my gosh, holy nipples, Batman. Did he always have those nipples? Or, I mean, I feel like I would have remembered that. Kind of an apocalypse looking belt. So much fun, I love it. And actually, it's a props to RT Bear for, you know how normally Cable's guns uh, drawn by other people look like gigantic vacuum cleaners or hair dryers or just something you just, I don't know, like miniature luggage that you just hold up and blast fly out of it for no reason. But there looks like an actual attempt here to make this look like kind of a working gun. And there's patches and pockets for days. Patches and pockets. Oh my gosh, if you guys know patches and pockets, please comment below. I want 500,000 comments about patches and pockets, if you guys know what I'm talking about from old Saturday morning cartoon. Something I really looked forward to which probably says a lot about me, and frankly, I don't give a crap. So think what you will about my love for patches and pockets. Pouches. I wasn't, it, it wasn't even patches ever. It was pouches. Pouches and pockets. I mean, there is a patches and pockets, but this is pouches, what's happening here. And what, um, well, this is kind of crazy. This kind of looks like Herbie, the rob robot from the Fantastic Four. I mean, how is he, thank God everyone is like, six feet wide with like the, I mean, his pelvis must be the size of like, I don't even know what, a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen bug. I mean, let's not get crazy. I'm not talking about the bus or the van or anything. Anyway, I'm just rambling and not even talking about the story, but we're here for the art today. So if you want to know about the story, you're going to have to go read this. Cable, volume 12. I'm just kidding. Volume 1, number 1, May 1993. Ah, oh, very good year. I don't know. No wonder why uh, Art doesn't pencil often, because he really puts in so much detail that would be like a, a hard schedule to keep up with. But I really do love his art, and that's probably the reason why I bought that series. So anyway, this one is totally fun. Save the best for last. Not the best artist, but just the coolness factor. This is an issue of Cable drawn by Derek Robertson. Yes, that Derek Robertson, the one uh, from The Boys. And I love Derek Robertson's art on New Warriors. I think that's pretty much when I fell in love with him. That wasn't my first introduction to him, but I really loved it. I don't know. He has such a fun... He's like a punk rock Brian Boland there's a little bit of um, Ethan Van Skyver in here. I feel like if I say that name, it's like uh, he who shall not be named. But whatever, he's my friend. He's insane, but I don't care. And um, I'm not promoting or uh, condoning his uh, you know, politics or anything like that. Just mentioning a slight comparison in the art. So we have Fabian Nicieza. And see, it's the inevitable point in a cable book where I have to turn the book sideways and we're already we're only on page two. But this is such a dope double page spread. I can't believe it. I just love Derek Robertson's art. John Holdridge, anchor, great job here. Chris Eliopoulos, letters. Marie Javins, colors. Isn't that interesting? She's now the uh, big wig at uh, DC. So... Kids, your dreams can come true. If you're sitting at home with your Procreate, wondering what the hell you're trying to do with your life, you could be running DC Comics before you know it. He is just such a great artist. I love his art so much. I mean, he definitely, um, I feel like he had such a like punk rock edge to him at first. And now of course, you know, it's all commercial with the boys and whatnot, but just a great artist. I've always loved his art. I'm getting slight Dale Keown vibes, another one of my favorite artists. Just really fun hatching and great, great textures that he brings to his art. He's also a very good storyteller. I always enjoy a book that's so funny. That's like such a typical Derek Robertson mouth there. I love his art. Too much fun. 
I, that's the best butt I've ever seen on cable, I think. Usually it's as wide as a, you know, sofa cushion. So props to you, Derek, for trying to give cable a shapely ass. <laughs> Don't know what's going on in here. Oh my God, house ads for days. I mean, some cool looking books though, right? You guys are mad because I'm flipping through this. Well, you're gonna have to run out and go get cable number five if you wanna read these house ads. How do you like that? That's cool. Midnight Suns Unlimited. I do have fond memories of that. It seems like every time they try to do their horror stuff, it doesn't turn out super well, but oh well. Ooh, fun zip -a tone there. Yeah, I feel like Derek Robertson always brings like really fun, like shading and textures to his art. Just really cool. Loving it. Ooh, that's cool. Big uh, Pizza Hut X-Men ad by Joe Matarera, inked by Scott Hanna. Very cool. I love early Joe Matarera. The fact that it's so rudimentary and so influenced by Art Adams and just so cool and big and powerful and just like full of potential and enthusiasm. It's always fun to see like where an artist came from and where they went. Major screen door action in there. Love it. I don't know, very cool, fun book. If you love Derek Robertson and have not, don't have this in your collection, find it and include it. So that's my trip down the cable, on the cable tip. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. Thanks, guys.